This video is about the GCSE at Excel maths exam that happened on Friday, the 20th of May. Um, I know that many students have been a little bit distressed and upset um, about the paper and in particular the last question on it. Um, I'm doing this video to help people, well students, um, have some more confidence on the next paper two and paper three by showing you how you can think through it with the information that you've already learnt at school. So let's have a look at the question. Obviously this is an unfamiliar question. You probably haven't seen one of these before in class and your teachers won't have done it because the exam boards think of a situation that won't ever have come up before. So when you first see the exam question, you probably, unless you're a genius, aren't going to know what to do. So what you've got to do is look at it and think about, right, this is about area. What sort of areas have I found out previous in school? Well, you will have learned how to find the area of a circle and you will have found out the area of other shapes like triangles and rectangles. So you start sort of thinking about what you could apply from knowledge that you've already learned to this question. So the first thing that I would look at is the middle circle here. So we can see that we want this sort of area here and this area here. So what we can do is we can work out the area of the full circle. So how I kind of want you to think in the exam, paper two and paper three, is just go back to basics and think about what have I learned since year seven at school. So let's have a look at finding just the area of that middle circle. So on this particular question, you're told that A, B, equals b c equals four centimeters so what that means is is this distance from a to b is four centimeters and this distance from b to c is also four centimeters okay so for the middle circle okay we can see that we've got the radius that's the center of the circle to the outside so this bit here is the radius okay so what i'm going to put here and i'm going to label it really clearly is that this bit here is the area of the middle circle. And what I would say in the exam is to label things as you're going along in a logical order. So area of a circle is pi r squared. The radius is four, so we pop four in. We square that, so four times four is 16. And you get 16 pi. So we've done that, we've actually found an area of that middle circle. Now, obviously, I haven't seen the mark scheme, but this might, just might, get you a mark. So then after that, you kind of think, well, what can I do next? How on earth am I going to get this area here and this area here? Well, my next thought was here to here to here. I wonder if I could put a triangle in. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a triangle in. So from here down to here. And then we're then thinking, well, I don't know what any of the distances are. I don't know what any of the angles are either. But this radius here is four centimetres. And then if we look at this line here as well, well, that's the centre of the circle to the outside. So this is also a radius. So this also must be four centimetres. And then if we then look at the triangle again, well, because these two circles touch and the circles directly in the middle and all three are exactly the same, then this middle point here must make a symmetrical triangle, which means that this has got to be four centimetres as well. So what we've got is an equilateral triangle. Then we can think about the angles and think, well, in an equilateral triangle, they're all 60 degrees. So we've got 60 degrees here, 60 degrees here, 60 degrees here. Now, we know that um, from the revision list that an area of a triangle was in the exam, half AB sine C. So what we can do now is apply that. So I'm going to sort of write underneath here now, triangle area. And label that. And always write down your formula. So half AB sine C, which is also on the formula sheet. So we've got half, two of the sides, any of them, and the angle in between. So we've got times four times four times sine 60. So four times four is 16 and half of 16 is eight. And we've then got eight times sine 60. 
Now this little bit here, and we haven't got a calculator, but it was on the revision list that you had to know ex um, trig exact values. Now I've taught my students a little way of remembering these. So all of my students had remembered to write these figures down here. So 0, 30, 45, 60 and 90. But we only need to go to 60. And then we've got a method, which you may or may not know, of writing the numbers 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4 in. Then square rooting each one. Well, I only need to do this one and put in a 2 underneath. So if anyone would like me to do a video of that, I can. You can just put it in the comments. So instead of sine 60, I'm going to swap sine 60 with root 3 over 2. Now, there's nothing I can do with this here. There's, there's, there's nothing that I'm thinking, well, what on earth can I do with that there? But then I see, well, OK, this is times 8 and that's divided by 2. So actually, I could write it as 8 root 3 over 2 and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we can simplify it a little bit. OK, so that's now the area of the triangle. We've got this area of the triangle here. OK, so that means we've got part of this area, this, this section here. And then when you're looking at this here, you're thinking, well, there's nothing in the GCSE exam that can work out anything other than a triangle or a circle or half a circle or what's on the revision. This is a sector. Well, a sector OK, we need a curve and two straight lines. So we're looking at this now thinking, well, this isn't a sector, so we can't apply it here. And then you're kind of thinking, well, what else can I do? And then what came to me then is actually, well, if I look at the diagram a slightly different way, actually from here to here to here, this is a sector. Now. If you're thinking, well, you know that revisionist is saying to me, area of sectors is on the exam, it hasn't come up yet, here it is. So now what we can do is we can find the area of this sector here. And this little bit here is what we call a segment. And this segment here is identical to this segment here. So without confusing you too much, what we're going to do now is we're going to work out the area of this sector here we're then going to take away the area of the triangle, which we've just worked out. And that's going to leave us with this area here, which we call a segment. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label this segment. And I'm just going to just do a little sketch of what we're actually doing. So we've got a triangle. And a curve on the end. OK, and then I'm going to put a line in here. So this is our triangle. This is the segment, but all together, it's the sector. So we know that it's 60 degrees there. And we know that the radius is 4 from the original diagram. So area of a sector is theta over 360 multiplied by pi r squared. Well, the angle is 60 over 360. And we're going to multiply that by pi times the radius, which is 4 squared. Now we need to sort this out. If we've got a zero on top and a zero on the bottom, we can cancel it. 6 over 36 will reduce to 1, 6 because they're both in the 6 times table. And then we can multiply by pi and 4 squared is 16. OK, right. So what I'm going to do now is put all this together. So we've got 16 from here divided by 6, which is a 6, and then times pi. We don't have to put that time sign in here. Then I can cancel this down because obviously it's in the two times table. So we have both eight over three pi. OK, so the area of the full sector. Is eight thirds pi, but we need the area of this segment here. So what we've got to do now is subtract the area of the triangle away from the area of the sector. OK, so what I'm going to do now is take my I'll go up here is 8 over 3 pi and then I'm going to subtract if we come back down to here the area of the triangle which we found out which is 4 root pi okay so this means this here is the area of the segment okay area of sector take away area of triangle now we've actually got two segments because we've got this one here and this one here and they're going to be identical in area. 
So what I can do is multiply this by 2, okay? So 8 times 2 is 16, so we've got 16 over 3 pi. And 4 times 2 is 8, so we've got 8 root 3. So this now, okay, provides us with the area, okay, of these two segments, okay? Now, what we need to do is we've got to now put together the area of the two segments and then, which is, sounds, sounds a bit weird, add back on the area of the triangle, okay? So we've then got two segments, which is here and here, plus the triangle, which is here. So the two segments are 16 over 3 pi minus 8 root 3 plus the area of the triangle going back down to here 4 root 3. These two we can simplify together. So we've got 16 over 3 pi minus 8 root 3 add 4 root 3 will give you minus 4 root 3. And then what we've got now is we've actually got a simplified version of the two segments and the triangle simplified, okay? So what we've actually found out now is the area of all of that shape. However, there's four of them. There's one, two, three, four. So then what we've got to do is we've got to multiply all of this here by four. Okay, 16 times four is going to give you 64 over 3 pi. 4 times 4 is going to give you 16 root 3, okay? And then this now is the area of this area and this area here all together. Now to get this shaded area here, what we're going to do is go back to the original calculation at the start, which was the area of the full circle, take off the area that we've just worked out, and then simplify it, okay? So the area of the circle is here, 16 pi. So I'm gonna write down 16 pi. And then we've got to minus all of this. And I'm gonna put some big brackets in here because we've got to subtract the whole thing. Okay? So what we've got to do now is we've got to take away 16 pi minus 64 over 3 pi. So that's a little bit complicated to work this little bit out. So what I'm going to do is just pull the numbers out. So I've got 16 minus 64 over 3, okay? So for me, I'm going to make it a little bit easier by turning that into a mixed number. So I'm just going to think how, how many 3s will go into 64 um 21 and one left over so if you times three by 21 you get 63 and then one left over so that's 21 and a third okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do 16 take away 21 and a third so if you think what's the difference between 21 and 16 that's five but obviously it's 16 take away 21 so it's going to be minus five and one third okay so we're almost at our final answer now, okay? I'm gonna just put it in this, pop it in this corner here. So what we've got is we've got 16 pi minus 64 over three pi, which gives us this. So we've got minus five and a third pi. And if you prefer, and you want to keep that as a, a top heavy fraction, you can. Five times three is 15, add one is 16. So alternatively, you can write that, that's fine. And then this little bit here where we've got minus, minus 16 root 3. So a minus and a minus is a plus. So it's then going to be plus 16 root 3. And then the whole answer all together, I'm just going to write this out. I'm going to fit it on the other side because I'm getting a bit squished here. So we've got. Minus 5 and 1 third pi plus 16 root 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap that the other way around. It just, you don't have to, but it just seems a little bit.
better to have your positive number at the front and then your negative following behind it. And then we think, right, I need something else. Think of what the teacher says. Every lesson, don't forget your units, okay? What are the units? It's area and it's in centimetres, so centimetres squared. So that is the answer. Alternatively, 16 root 3 minus 16 over 3, if you prefer to leave it as a top heavy, pi centimetres squared. So either of those two are your answer. Now, hopefully you'll have understood what I've done. But what I want you to sort of think about is actually um, when you're in an exam and you've got an unfamiliar question that you've never seen before, is to just go back to basics, think about what you've been taught all through school, and you're literally just going to claw as many marks as you possibly can. So I hope that helps you and everyone good luck for your exam.